welcome back. Over the last few days, we've been discussing alien technology and UFOs with a Tic Tac and things like that and weird quantum physics. I think we need to step back a bit and understand the brilliance of us, the human race, and how scientists have actually built incredible things which work. Today we're going to look at microwaves, radar, and a bizarre new propulsion drive which might take us, humans, to the stars. Microwave popcorn. Where did that all come from? It seems to have popped into the human existence from nowhere. Not true. Microwave energy has been well known. It's part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Most microwaves are in the one millimeter range. I mean, you can measure that on a ruler if you could see them. But how do you make a microwave emitter? Again, this seems to have come out of nowhere, but in fact, it's relatively simple. Have you ever done this experiment? Blow over the top of a pipe. What's happening is that my breath, the air that's coming out of my lungs, is resonating in the shape of the round pipe and producing a frequency shift. If you look inside your microwave oven, please don't do this, you'll find a cavity device that looks a bit like this. And all that happens inside is that you blow electrons from this center bit out and they go into these round cavities and produce a frequency shift. And so the electrons are tuned to say one millimeter wavelength, which we call microwaves. A lot of these technologies seem initially very mysterious, but in fact, they're quite steam engine-like. You just have to build them to work. And this is why I'm interested in microwaves. NASA has announced the EM drive. It shouldn't work. There is no propulsion, but you need very little propulsion when you're in deep space. I mean, the gravity between large masses is quite low. So if you get up to a speed, you can just coast. So all you need is a small push and you can go very fast. Let's look at how the EM drive works in detail. It's fascinating. A mythical form of space propulsion finally gets a real test. In an excellent Wired article by Daniel Oberaus, Daniel says, Since the birth of the space age, the dream of catching a ride to another solar system has been hobbled by the tyranny of rocket equation. This sets a hard limit on the speed and size of the spacecraft. Even with today's most powerful rocket engines, scientists estimate it would take 50,000 years to reach our closest interstellar neighbor. But out there are some advanced propulsion concepts. One of the most controversial is the EM drive. First described nearly two decades ago, EM drive works by converting electricity into microwaves and channeling this electromagnetic radiation through a conical chamber. 
In theory, the microwaves exert a force against the walls of the chamber to produce enough thrust to propel a spacecraft once it's in space. But there is a problem. It is still unclear whether the EM drive is able to produce enough thrust to propel a spacecraft. It turns out the biggest problem is measuring how much it does produce. One scientist claimed in the Journal of Propulsion and Power that he observed several dozen micronewtons of thrust. For the sake of comparison, a SpaceX Merlin engine produces about 845,000 newtons of thrust at sea level. So it turns out one of the problems is actually measuring whether the EM drive produces any thrust at all. What was required was a nano-newton measuring device. Amazingly, a pendulum or a standard balance actually works pretty well. Any thrust produced by the EM drive would push one side down and you can see any deflection with a very sensitive laser measure. But if it does work, we will have a radical, non-chemical rocket engine that produces thrust that would work in a very low gravity situation. And remember, the EM drive is science, not science fiction. Well, that was my film for today, but I thought you might like to see some of the distractions I get while trying to make these films for you. We live in France, we have a whole bunch of animals, and they often come into the film studio. <sighs> it's a zoo! <coughs> Corbe! This is Happa, this is Wallace, this is Dorothy. It's coming in Corbet. behind is little Corbet. Corbet. Here he is. Yeah. Come and say hi, Corbet. Come on. Come on. Move it further forward. Yeah, he don't want to go by Wallace. No. Yeah. He doesn't want to walk past Wallace. The other thing I'd like to discuss are comments. I love your comments. Most of them. But as an experiment, what we're going to do is allow comments just for 48 hours after the film is posted. And that in the shot over my shoulder is Dorothy taking a picture. Yeah, so 48 hours of comments. But one or two of you have incredible inside knowledge. And if you want to email me directly, go up to the About Professor Simon and you'll get my personal email. Then you can send me your really interesting stuff and we can make another film. Thanks for being part of this amazing zoo. Stay tuned because that truth is out there. Mm -hmm.